All right, Shalom, my good first and foremost. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakak Wadash, the honest to our elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, and honest to you, bros, who are out there doing the work in sincerity and in truth. All right, this lesson is entitled The Justification Demon. All right, and you will see it often in guys who cannot take rebuke. Sakari was a recent example. Element was an example, Nazariah was an example, Mac 10 was an example, uh, uh, different brothers uh, uh, who were with us and other guys like Nate and Yohanna and different guys like that and, and different guys along with them, you will see that often while you're in this truth. A man who does not take rebuke well at all, man. And rebuke is really to keep us on point. Of course it doesn't feel good, but that's what discipline is, man. How else are you supposed to learn if you don't know how to be wrong? That was the whole uh, point of, of the book of Genesis when Adam uh, uh, took of that, that fruit, so to speak, the philosophy. He said, now you should be his guides, knowing good and evil. All right, so you're gonna know the evil of things and you're gonna get rebuked for it, man. That's part of our task in this thing. But who can keep pushing? Who can accept that rebuke? And who can keep going? Because that demon to hop on guys, and they might con you to death. Because you got those brothers who will con you to death, man. Why are you telling them this and that about certain things that are going on? Con, con, uh, con, con. And then brothers even have to question themselves afterwards. You think you received it? You think you got it? Because you just over there conning brothers to death, man. You're not showing any true understanding. And most of the time when it is a brother who cons you to death, most of the time he ain't really received what you were saying. And he goes back to himself, but when he's by himself, and he tells himself why he did what he did. He justifies to the most high why he did what he did. And that's one of the biggest mistakes you will ever make. And that's what gets a lot of guys out of here. That's why eventually, you know, uh, the Lord starts snatching the spirit away from that guy more and more and more. Just, just like a guy winning at a game of tug and war. Eventually, the guy who, who lasts the longest, he starts yanking all that rope from him. And the guy falls into the pit. And that's how it is, just like when these guys start losing the spirit. You start noticing them getting worse. The stuff that you thought that they conned you to death on, you notice it, it just keep coming back. And they keep getting worse. That's because they justify to themselves and to the most high of why they did what they did and why they don't think it's wrong, despite how much they've been rebuked about it, man. You know? And this is um, 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. All right, with that being said, man, you know, of course, a whole bunch of guys, look, we all sinners. We all got things going on. But in actuality, if you can't take rebuke and your uh, uh, response is, we all sinners, or you can't take rebuke and correct yourself, that's the equivalent of saying, I have no sin. That's why I say you deceiving yourself. Because if you got the whole church and everybody rebuking you, you know, Obviously, man, you done did something wrong. You know what I'm saying? But you got a lot of guys who don't want to hear that. You know, unless it's just a special case. Of, and that's rare. Where it's a special case to where you got to take the low. But even the scriptures tell you to take the low in that. But you got guys who also read that scripture uh, where it tells you to be defrauded yeah. and taking the low. And they use that as an excuse to justify themselves. And you wind up being a victim of that demon. Yeah, I'ma just take the low. Take the low from what? You were actually wrong. <laughs> you need to take the low from wickedness. That's what you need to do. And offend less, like the scriptures say. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So you're making the Lord a liar when you go justify yourself, man. That's what you're doing. You're telling Yahweh Shai that he's a liar. That's what you're saying, man. Hey, and you, and you don't want to put yourself in a position to what that's what you're doing. You're over there calling the Lord a liar. 
you know? Hey, that's that's a bad place to be in, man. And the scripture's telling you that. That's why it tells you to examine yourselves, man. That's why if you got a group of brothers, all right, it's one thing you question it when it's just one-on-one. -on -one. But then you get two, three, four, five, six, and then they end up turning to a whole entire camp getting on you. Obviously, man, you were wrong. And everybody in the background, take the rebuke out. Just take the rebuke out. And here you go, still going. How do I take the rebuke? Like, man, what do you what do you mean? How do you take it? The scriptures tell you. What that means is the word is not in you. That's what that means. And you rebellious. And you calling the Lord a lie. So that, and going back to verse 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So a brother who's open, he's able to, uh, uh, the Lord looks at that man and sees that he's humble. Like, Lord, I know what I've been doing. And you confessing that to the Lord. You're not going back and telling the Lord, well, you know, I'm going to take the low, Lord, you know. So I'm going to suffer, despite what the brother said about me, I'm going to suffer it, Lord. You over here telling the Lord that you ain't did nothing wrong, you know? You over here telling the Lord, hey, look, I, I, I'm just this, and this is the reason I did this, Lord. You know my heart, but that, that's why they said what they said, because they can't see it, but you know my heart, Lord. And, hey, man, you being a real demon when you do that. That demon is on you, and you don't even know it. So if you're watching this and that's something that you're prone to doing, you need to check it right now. All right? That's why when you rebuke guys real hard and they might be justifying themselves, but then they, then all of a sudden you see a little tug of war going on in their spirit and they start, they automatically about to cry. Do you bros know what that is? That's the demon. The demon don't want to leave that brother. So... Now the brother's spirit is at war. That's why he's at a point where he's starting to break down. You see tears. You see all these different things going on with him. And it's because his, his spirit is getting hurt. And if if he, now it's the point where he has to make a choice, man. Humble yourself. Pray. And the demon leave. Repent. Or justify yourself. And that demon finna bring more. All right? Hey, the truth is for real, man. Why well, you see these guys act like this, man? Like I say, not to keep bringing even Sicario, but you see, when he got rebuked the way that he did, it, we didn't tell him that, uh, we, well, pretty much we told him to repent. And what did he do, man? Oh, it's mainly them little niggas over there saying stuff. It wasn't a possible. Hey, you see that? That's, a, that's another example. What Nazariah them say? Where y'all apostles at? Why y'all ain't this? Why y'all ain't that? That demon getting so strong, it's making you a respectable person. It's making you despise brothers. It's making you despise other Israelites. <laughs> make you hang with Kimmy. <laughs> make you do all types of stuff, man. It make you hang with niggas. And, and next thing you know, you vibing with niggas more than you vibe with the brothers and the truth. And the brother's telling you you're tripping. But that, that nigga demon on you, it won't let go, man. This is Psalm 32, verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sins a lot. So that's what you're supposed to be doing, man. All them sins that, that you committed, whether it be breaking the Sabbath, whether it be you had an adulterous thought, or whatever the case may be, hey, you're supposed to break down when you pray at night or in the morning or whenever you have your time to talk to the Lord and pray to Him. Hey, you need to be confessing that, man. Don't be going on like it's just water under the bridge. Because remember, the scriptures say the Lord requires that which is past. His angels are all over the place. But a man who can acknowledge and say, hey, this is this is what I did, man. And I'm ashamed, I'm hurt. And I know you can destroy me. But I don't want you to destroy me. I don't want you to take the spirit away from me. That's the type of man who the Lord looks at and say, look at him. Look at how good my servant is. Although he fell victim to this stuff in Babylon, look at him. He's heartbroken by it. 
in this flesh that I done put him in. And guess what he does? He forgives you, man. It's that simple, but that demon don't want you to repent. That's what you gotta understand about these demons, man. And I'll get a last scripture. You guys want oh. And this is um, Sirach 32. Like I was saying, these demons, they don't want you to repent, man. Because a man who don't repent don't have to be forgiven. It's just like if you wrong a brother, but you don't uh, uh, confess your wrong to that brother. That brother don't have to forgive you. Now, what do you leave that up to? If the Most High liked that brother, and the Most High with him, and you truly offended him, and he's not sending up prayers for you, Most High gonna be like, nah, man, I'm sick of this guy. He shouldn't have ever offended my servant, who I love way more than you. Because the Most High got favorites like that, man. And that ain't nothing to play with. That's why, that's the part of being humble. Not a guy who walks around, I'm humble, I, I'm humble. I, that's a guy who can't uh, confess his sins. You know? That's why me and the Lord was always crying and were always lowly. Doing shit that the, that the world may deem him crazy for. You know? All right. Sirach so chapter 32, verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. All right, so it's telling you that a sinful man, he's going to just make an excuse for whatever the hell he want to make an excuse for, man. All right. He going to, hey, it don't matter what you tell him. He going to find an excuse for it. And if he don't find an excuse in front of you, he's going to justify himself right in front of the Lord. And he'll, he may badmouth you to the Lord. And what is the Lord going to do with a, with a nigga like that who call himself in the truth? Because, like, remember the scriptures say, evil men have crept in unawares. And, and, hey, that's a nigga right there. That ain't no good dude, man. You know? Because, hell, even our brothers go off in some form of fashion. And, you know, a brother don't think horrible of you when it happened. He'll rebuke you. But, but not looking at you, you a nigga this and this. Hey, but them guys with them demons on them, them demons like, yeah, fuck them niggas. Niggas need to mind they damn business. That's what they need to do. And man, you got that demon all in your head, you better rebuke it. You better not let that demon go and bad mouth and all this other stuff. You gotta rebuke that, man. All right. Verse 18, a man of counsel will be considerate, but a strange and proud man is not done it with fear, even when of himself he have done without counsel. So it's just telling you, man, a, a, a wise man is going to be a counsel and he's going to be considerate. And what is a considerate man? Think so up. Mm. And if he getting rebuked, man, I didn't even recognize it. I did that. Brother, I did. Yeah, hey, you got all the brothers who love him. Yeah, you did that. Uh, man, it's a lot, bro. It's a lot. I didn't, hey, and, and that's a man of counsel. That's a man who's considerate. You know? He, he's not going back and about to justify himself, and then he's going to go back, pray to the Lord, wish bad on you for talking to him, <laughs> for rebuking him, or, 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 or justify himself and, and, and say all the reasons he did what he did. Why? Because he knows that if the brothers step to him or different things like that, then what he was doing was off. And even if it wasn't that particular incident where it may have been just completely off, he know that there's other things that he's done where he was off. And hey, the Lord is uh, 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 working that out, man, to where guys who got this type of mentality with that justification demon on them, they getting snipped, all of them. That's why the Lord is exposing guys like that now. Notice all the guys that's getting exposed now do not take rebuke. They justify whatever they say and how they do it. Remember Mac 10? The reason I didn't teach for a month, because I had some land to tend to. And then what he did, he got proud. He said, he said, uh, which that's something you probably wouldn't know anything about. So yeah, he <laughs> you saw how quick that justification was for him not teaching the word? 
because he had no excuse, but he made one up. Sakari had no excuse for hanging with Kimmy and getting a reward. That's why he never addressed the scriptures that were being brought out on him. So, so what this what this nigga do? Hey, 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 you know, it's good brothers, and we was out there, and we, we held four camps. We held four camps. Y'all only do the work one time a week. We held four camps. We held four camps. Never addressed it, but he came up with something, just an excuse, according to his own will. And that's, hey, he didn't have an excuse for Sarnetta vainly taking the Lord's name in vain and using it. And that he's the enforcer of that. The Levi back in the ancient world wouldn't have ever enforced that. They wouldn't have ever enforced it. Levi was very strict. Sarnetta not the king of Egypt, nigga. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So this is just going to show, brothers, you know, Lord will you was edified. Do not have that mind frame. Be humble. Acknowledge your faults to brothers and to the Lord. Do both, man. You know, do both. You know, because I used to hear back in the uh, day, it was mainly from Element. Well, he ain't really got to repent to the brother as long as he repent to the Lord. Like, no, nah, that ain't the way. He ain't repent to both. All right? You can repent to the brother and not repent to the Lord, and the Lord don't forgive you. Or you can repent to the Lord, but the brother don't forgive you, and the Lord, Lord, the brothers don't. Because the brother don't forgive you, he don't forgive you. Do both, man. That's called being humble. And a real man on top of that. Confess your faults one to another. Exactly. Confess your faults one to another. Go with you, brothers, for edifying. Shalom.